This is Smith Sharp, and you're listening to Navigating Clarity. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Navigating Clarity. So glad you joined it's us. It's going to be so glad. Yes, it's going to be just another great week. It's a great week. Yeah. And so and, and, and uh, Ellie Mae is one week older. Yes, she is one yes. week older. She's yes. almost 20 In weeks old. Euro. Yes, correct. <laughs> 20 weeks old, halfway through. <laughs> 20 weeks old with mommy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yesterday you talked a lot about pride and I kind of wanted to start there and how, <laughs> how, I mean, all of us have pride in some ways in oh, ourselves yeah. and how it's pretty much just the vice for evil and, um, kind of how do we combat that pride? Like in our lives, like in an active way, cause you think about it, some pride, like a sports accomplishment or graduating college or a business promotion, like those are good things. But things that potentially and oftentimes are f- come with pride. Uh huh. So I mean, do you do you, when you think of pride, do you think of pride as being good or bad? I think in context, it can be both. Okay. Um, Explain that. I mean, I think like a sports achievement or a good grade in class or a business promotion. Um, those are all good things. Okay. So beauty. I mean, it depends on, are you talking about outer beauty or inner beauty? I'm talking, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about, yeah, just beauty, like outer beauty, I guess, or inner beauty, either one. I mean, I think it depends on how you look at yourself. Wisdom? Well, wisdom's a good thing to have. Right. It's a good thing to have. See, I think when you're, when we're talking about this, what we're talking about really, when you're talking about pride, I think you're talking about, uh how you order it you're not you're not talking necessarily about the existence of it maybe um because the devil was all of those things you know the devil was smart and accomplished and you know you're you're not you you tend not to be proud if you don't have accomplishments right it's true. So you have to be proud of something. You're proud of your beauty. You're proud of your wisdom. You're proud. Of, but that's the same as the devil. That's exactly the same. He was just like, man, I'm wonderful. <laughs> you know? So, and where, where we go wrong, which is where a most, most all of us go wrong, is that we take pride in ourselves. And what we don't do is we don't glorify God with it. I mean, we glorify ourselves with it. And a lot of times what we're doing is we're praying to God to make us be something that then we can glorify ourselves with. You see, and that is, that is, those are loves that are out of order. Those are desires that are out of order. And so, you know, to love God first, that's the first commandment to, 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 to have him first in your life. Uh, That's the reason for tithing first fruits to have him first makes everything else. See, if we have these other good things and they're not bad things, they're good things, But if we have them in the wrong order, if we glorify, if we, if we love them in the wrong order, then we are like the devil (laughs) and that will cause us, that will create a demise that over time wrecks, wrecks us. So give an example of like pride in a healthy way and with your loves in the right order versus the same pride in the wrong way. Well, I mean, I think that's, I think that's an easy thing to do for me because I've had them both. Right. So, 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 I mean, before Jesus and even, even after, so I don't, uh, you know, I, certainly before it's a lot easier before, cause it's a lot cleaner, but, but everything was about my own accomplishments, you know, and I prayed, I mean, I, I, I would ask, I knew about God. I didn't know who God was. I didn't know who Jesus was, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I asked God to make me successful. 
you know, I, and I probably, if you, if I could interview my, <laughs> my past self, I would have thought there was something spiritual about that, but it's not spiritual. It's demonic. It's trying, it's elevating yourself in order to accumulate praise, accumulate adoration, build me up, you know, see me as something. And, and that's not what the human role is. The human, the human role, is we're like the moon. We, we don't have any light. I have no light to give anybody. I have no life to give anybody. I have no energy to give anybody, but God does. And to the degree that we are pointing to God, then we, ref, we, ref, we reflect, we reflect the energy of God and the life of God and all of the goodness of God is allowed to flow through us. And then we're bright, like just to the degree that the moon reflects the sun, mm -hmm. the moon is lit up. And so when you start living to glorify God, then one, I think you're just way freer. You're, you're not as, it's not as, it's not a tyranny. You know, when you're doing it for yourself and about yourself, there's a tyranny to it. There is a life and death consequence of failure. If you fail, you die, you know, that, that kind of deal. But when you're, when you're doing it to give glory to God, then, you know, you're giving it everything you have. And, you know, if you, if you fail, well, you just, you just get up and keep giving it your best. You know, it's not life or death to the person because mm -hmm. he's our life and he's our death. I mean, th that our, our job is really to point to him. So Jesus was able to look like a failure. This is so important. Like I used to think I want to be successful for God. When I first came to Christ, like I want to be successful for God, successful. And the Lord just over the years has impressed on me. Yeah, you're willing to be successful for me, but are you willing to fail to be seen as a failure? Cause that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to risk failure in order to serve me. Why is that? Because you're going to have to tell people things they don't want to hear. Ask them to do things they don't want to do. That's what Jesus was doing, right? I mean, he, he went to a cross. He was willing to be perceived as a failure in order to be a success in God's economy. And ultimately, that's what we're all asked to do. He loses his life for my sake, gains it. That's what that means. Nah, that's good stuff. That was that's, that is good stuff. That is that's really not bad at all, right there. Well, that the was, biggest way to get rid of your pride is to be a failure, right? To like, yeah. To, to to I mean, the mocking and the ridiculing. I mean, I'm often thought, man, I'd love to give my life for Christ, and but I've always kind of thought about it in a way like heroic, almost. It, yeah. Like, like, like yeah. the Hulk. Well, <laughs> you like the Hulk. Well, like, 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 uh, Bonhoeffer, you know, I mean, he was this guy and he was this brilliant mind and he goes back into Germany, and, you know, but, 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 but even for him, it's only in looking back that he becomes this heroic figure at the time. He's just somebody that everybody ridiculed. Because he turned his, they thought he turned his back on his country. You know, they were like, what in the world is wrong? I mean, this person is our savior. This Hitler person is our savior. And you're somehow abandoning the faith or what? So I think, you know, whenever we have to be willing to, and I think all of the disciples were that way. I mean, they don't, they don't go out in this blaze of glory. They go out in this little, you know, there was nothing spectacular about Jesus's crucifixion. People were crucified all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, there was nothing, there was no band. There was nobody going, oh, he's giving his life. for the. There was nobody doing that. Everybody was just confused and they didn't know what was going on. So in a culture where like 
the most attention gets on those that have the glory or are like focused on pursuing that glory how does the christian kind of like slide almost slide under like not necessarily wanting the glory but to be to culturally make an effect like everything is in the spotlight i I think i think that is such a great question and you know we're we're in a culture where affirmation is if you're not getting enough then somehow there's something wrong with you your self-esteem needs to be reinforced all the time you shouldn't be denied really anything that you want. And if you are deprived of that thing, then it's somebody's fault. You have a right to blame them. And all that stuff is just not what, what that stuff does is it turns our eyes on ourselves. And the more we look at ourselves, the more unhappy we get. The more we look at ourselves, the more disappointed we get. The more we look at ourselves, the more embarrassed we are. Same thing with Adam and Eve. That's exactly what happened with them. When sin sin came into the world, they all of a sudden right then started noticing themselves and they were embarrassed. To the degree we can fix our eyes on externally and, and really... We were made to worship something that's that we're going to worship something. It's either going to be God or it's going to be money or it's going to be ourselves or it's going to be glory. I mean, entire civilizations were based on worshiping glory, gaining glory. Um, you know, the Vikings were that way, shame and honor, honor culture for sure. Um, but, and, and I think a lot of Oriental, uh, cultures were like that. So, um, practically though, how do we gain glory for Christ in a world that's just always looking to gain glory for itself? Yeah, I, I have a choice whether or not to glorify God. I have a choice whether or not to acknowledge God. You know, all the things that you were talking about that are good things. Um, wisdom, being smart, uh, getting an education, having your health, being beautiful. All of these things, we either acknowledge God as the giver of gifts and then we become humble because you you have no control over whether or not you're beautiful or not and 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 yet we take that gift and we lord it over people who aren't as pretty as we are somehow now i'm a better person because I'm beautiful and you're not beautiful in the eyes of our culture, in the eyes of our world, and that makes me a better person. How how is that in any way reasonable? You're not a better person. You just happen to have the genetic material that made you look that way. You were the recipient of a gift you don't deserve. And then we lift ourselves up as if we're better because we are a size, I don't know, what's a size, size six or something, you know, and not a size 12 or whatever, you know, is that what, right, right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> or, 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 or males, maybe strength or athleticism or something like that. You may have worked to hone those skills, but you were born with the genetic material that that made you able to compete and do it at a very high level that is a gift from god not something that you should use to say you're a better person than somebody else to lift yourself up to glorify yourself but it's one you should come in with humility and just be grateful to the living god for giving it to you failure to acknowledge god's goodness in our lives is probably one of the fundamental sins It's just, we don't say thank you. We don't acknowledge the fact that if it weren't for the grace of God, I couldn't accomplish this. I wouldn't be where I am. I I wouldn't have the life I have if it weren't for the grace of God. And yet we have it showered on us. And our response is to demand more, not appreciate what we have. Hmm. So what do you think is one like pretty 
specific example that we're failing to recognize God's goodness, like in culture and as a society? Well, as a society, I think we are failing to acknowledge how great we have it. Hmm. I mean, everybody's anxious and we, and everybody's worried and everybody's so afraid something's going to get taken from them or they're not going to get enough. We live in the most extravagant of resources available. Nobody is afraid of going hungry in the United States of America. You know, healthcare is abundant. We have everything. If we, if we don't, if we are too hot, we can control the temperature if we want to, right? We have education that is laid out for us. You don't have to belong to a particular social class. You know, every, you could go to the library anytime you wanted to, and you could educate yourself by yourself better than any other time in human history. That was never available just to the common people. And it's not enough. It, it, you know what? And, and what the tragedy is, it's not enough. And yet we have, we are the beneficiaries of so much stuff that our country is going bankrupt, trying to please us with more stuff. 35 trillion, 36, probably trillion dollars in debt. Now there's no way there's no, there, it's impossible. It's going blank as fast as you, and we're still not satisfied. How ungrateful. What are we doing? What are we even thinking? And we're so afraid somebody's going to come take our stuff. It's, I think God looks at that. People are going to look back at us if we're still around and Jesus doesn't come back and it's a hundred years from now and they're going to look back at this and they go, how incredibly wasteful, wasteful and indulgent and just egocentric those people were. And they'll be talking about us. Hmm. Do you think there's any chance for a shift in that culturally or no? We've well, kind of dug our hole too deep. History says the only way to shift is pain. And it's pain on a national level. You know, that, that wakes you up. You can do without. Look how, during World War II, see, here's, here, you, you can see our culture, right? During World War II, we were in a war. And so everybody was in a war. The, whether you were overseas or you were on a boat or you were in the United States, if you were in the United States, they converted, you know, factories to, they used to build cars, now they're building planes or, you know, and Rosie the Riveter and everybody, you had rationing on milk, you had rationing on meat, you had everybody, what you bought, war bonds, you know, to support it, everybody was into it. Now, nothing like that happens. Nothing like that happens. What happens is, we go, we're fighting a war and we are insulated from it completely. We don't have to sacrifice anything for it. Uh, our politicians make sure we aren't touched in any way by whatever happens in Iraq or wherever it is that we are so that they don't lose our vote because we have to be uncomfortable about something. Well, if it's important enough for us to go to war over, then it's important enough for all of us to be uncomfortable about it, not just the boys and girls that have to go overseas. And see, we are, we've lost that. We, 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 we want, and we've been okay. We, we've agreed in some ways. We've agreed to, yeah, you can do whatever you want and spend however much you want. Just don't let it touch my life. Don't cause me pain. Don't cause me any trouble. And see, that's not the way it's supposed to be. So without pain, we're kind of just keeping on digging. Without, well, no, it'll fall. It'll, there'll be a lot of pain. And then I think the Bible promises that. The Bible promises that there's going to be a fall. And, you know, if you read uh, Revelation 18 and it's talking about Babylon, the great Babylon, this, 
this this culture that was so rich and it it was so rich and it was so powerful that it enriched almost the whole world like just merchants and ships and planes and well not planes in the bible but but you you can just read how everybody benefited from the prosperity of this one this one nation this one culture and then this babylon falls and then it drags everybody down with it and and that's what I mean, we're not going to avoid it because it's going to happen, but Christian, Christians need to know where we are. Where do you think we are? Uh, you know, our American system is part of that Babylonian system B- because we're, we're living so recklessly, so undisciplined on the financial side. And it's not even... so. A financial discipline is not a failed financial discipline. A financial discipline that has failed is a spiritual discipline that's failed. We show no restraint. We don't demand any restraint. We just demand more stuff. That's indulgence. And that's not what we should be doing. Ooh. Gosh, okay, <laughs> let's say something happy, okay, <laughs> for Jesus, right? Jesus actually said, live the opposite way. He said this from the very beginning. The, even the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve, not to demand, but to give, right? I mean, that's who God is. God is a, for God so loved the world that he gave. God is a giver. Christians are supposed to be givers, right? This is what we do. We are not on the, we're not the people who are, you know, beating the drums saying, give us more, give us, we're the, we're the people who are supplying. And we've always been the, like, like when the black plague and, and Europe and all that Christians were the ones that stayed. I mean, they stayed on the front lines. They saved people. That's how people knew in the first century, who were the Christians and who weren't the people that were loving other people and caring about people. I mean, they were even going to their death, right? Proclaiming love for the people that were killing them. See, that's what Christians are. We are the antithesis of a self-indulgent society. That's what Christians are. So we got to give more with humility. Really? We need to acknowledge that God has given to us everything. That's what we need to do. First, we need to, because you won't give unless you're grateful. So your first thing is you acknowledge how much God has given to you. Look how much God has given to me. I am never going to starve to death. I never have to worry about that. I have to worry if I'm going to buy a new car, but I don't have to worry if I'm going to starve to death. I don't have to worry if I'm going to get sick and die. You know, I really don't have to worry about that unless there's something that medicine can't do it because I'm guaranteed medical care, right? I mean, I've been, God has just poured everything on. So the first thing is to be grateful. And then once you realize how much you've been given, you are free to give to others. And see, that's the dynamic. That's the dynamic. I mean, the, the gratitude, the gratitude towards God first. Thank you, Lord. Not give me, Lord. Not That's not the first part. First, first part is thank you. Yeah, that's it. Gratefulness. Yeah, gratefulness. To be a river, not a pond. Be a river, not a pond. That's the way it has to be. You receive it and then you release it. You inhale, it's just like your breath. You inhale, then you exhale. You got to inhale first, then you exhale. That's the way you do it. It's good stuff right there. Yeah. Jesus died for us so that we could die for other people. Jesus yeah. loved us. It's not that we loved him first. He loved us. We love other people. We're just reflecting what God does. That's what we're doing. Just like the moon. But we have to know what God does to be able to reflect what That's God right. does. That's right. We got to acknowledge it. We, got, we have to see it. He, uh, Jesus was, he who has eyes to see, let him see. Or he who has ears to hear, let him hear. If you can hear it, if you can see it, phew, Man, God, you can, then you can pour it out. Release it to the world. That's it. That's what we do. That's good. Okay. Thanks for joining us this week. God bless you.